Is the NCAA about to crumble? A new group formed yesterday, and they certainly didn't say that this was their intention. But after speaking with some folks that are close to some of the organizations and some experts in the field, it certainly could be the beginning of the end for the NCAA. The Collective Association, TCA, formed yesterday, and its members are certainly interesting. You'll recognize the battle's end in there, which we've told you a ton about, being FSU's football collective. But you've also got collectives from six other schools, UGA, Tennessee, Ole Miss, Southern Cal, Michigan, and Penn State. Real power and big hitters in not only the college football world, but the NIL world as well. The makeup of this group is certainly telling, and we're going to get to that in just a moment as we discuss what it obviously points to for FSU's future, but let's talk about the mission of the group. Well, it's a threefold mission with different NIL collectives all across the country. Mission number one is to serve as a voice for athletes and their best interests. Number two is to provide a forum for collectives to discuss current NIL issues and share best practices. And number three, it provides a unified voice for collectives to leverage their positions. I'll link an article for both 247 and on three that you guys can read to learn more about this new collective association. But that's not my main focus today. And I would encourage you to dig in and, and learn more about it because I do think they're going to do some great work. The battle's in, obviously, spearheading being on the very front end of everything that is innovative within the world of NIL. But what I do want to talk about is what this means for the landscape of college athletics, specifically football, in the coming years. We've hinted at this and we've alluded to this, but the NCAA is losing more and more power as time goes on. The real power is held by the individual conferences and more and more by these collective associations and organizations at the different schools which they represent. The collective association aims to begin holding conversations with not only ADs and presidents and different collective members, but also with the NCAA president, Charlie Baker. Uh, also wants to chat with conference commissioners, again, athletic directors and others in high places. But I think it's most important that they are targeting the NCAA here. The NCAA lost when the NIL uh, laws were passed and allowed to come into place. And it infuriated that organization that money could somehow now go to athletes because of the NCAA's massive level of greed and want for themselves to only be the ones getting the money and not the college athlete or student. And now the NIL space is in many ways a mess. And at many locations, it's a mess. You've had kids promised money that they've not been delivered on. You've had kids transfer. It's obviously a massive recruiting tool. We understand what it's become. And, and I think we knew that it would be. And even the NCAA itself is actively trying to limit the ways that athletes are able to make money. There's controversy over whether or not athletes should be employees, whether or not they should continue to earn money the way they are now. And the NCAA has only its own interests at heart and at mind, like they always have. Now, here's what I could likely see happening. With enough time and enough fighting, I truly believe that these school presidents, ADs, collective leaders, and conference commissioners will put enough pressure on the conferences in general to essentially opt out of the NCAA. Now, I'm not going to sit here and pretend to know exactly how that would happen or the time frame of how that would happen. This isn't my ACC grant of rights video where, where we've got a seven-step process uh, detailed out on a PowerPoint to show you, but I could certainly see that happening. The NCAA is kind of a meaningless organization right now. They don't make any important decisions and this process, if we're being real, probably started about 10 years ago when the college football playoff came out and the NCAA doesn't even crown a champion in the FBS level of competition anymore. What about three years ago during the pandemic? The NCAA didn't set forth rules about how teams would play and where they could travel to and what would happen. Conferences did because conferences hold the power. And now collective organizations like the Battles End, like the ones we've talked about, they hold a ton of power, and they're challenging the NCAA on some of their rulings. The NCAA trying to say state laws don't matter where you live, and that's just not the case. The NCAA thinks that it's God, 
And I think that what you'll see is you'll see schools and conferences eventually opt out of that. Listen, if you're an FSU fan, I do want to give you a little bit of a, a, a word of encouragement here on this. We do a lot of ad reads. We're not doing an ad read on today's show. There's no sponsor listed. And the Battles in didn't pay us for this. But if you're an FSU fan and you care about FSU football and you have $5 a month to be able to donate or whatever that contribution level potentially would be, I'd say to go sign up for the Battles event. They are doing extremely good work. And there's a reason that Florida State's going to compete for an ACC championship and potentially the college football playoff this year. And it has a lot to do with the work that the Battles End has done on retention, um, taking care of athletes once they get to campus, and more. So please make sure that you're signed up. If you're not already, we will include a link to thebattlesend.com. You can get more information. Ingram Smith and the team over there do a phenomenal job. And you should be supporting. If you support any of the content that I make, whether you comment, like, super chat, join my Patreon, whatever you do, if you're not giving to the Battle's End, I would encourage you give to them for sure. If you're a fan of one of your other teams that's maybe listed or maybe watching this, make sure you're supporting your collective at your school too. I certainly want Florida State to have the biggest and the best, but you should be supporting those student athletes at, at your school as well. Want to know what the NCAA is good for now? Making themselves money. And taking wins away from college programs that we watched win actual games on the football field years ago. That's literally all they do at this point. You can call me crazy, but do you see it being that far out there for these Power 5 conferences to come together in a couple of years through an organization like the Collective Association? These ADs of different conferences are all in constant communication with each other, and so are the conference commissioners. The collective association is certainly the first step of seeing a more unified front that puts the athlete first. And here's what I can tell you with complete confidence. I know that most of these collectives, most exist out of a passion for helping their schools, whether they're alumni, whether they're just big fans, whatever the situation is, that's why most of these collectives have been started. They want to be passionate. They want to help their school when it comes to taking care of the athletes that will commit and will play sports at their schools. And there are certainly some bad characters in the NIL space, as there are in any space, whether you look at politics or religion or anywhere else, there are some people that do things very uh, motivated by wrong intentions. But even with the bad apples that exist in the NIL space, that doesn't compare, in my opinion, to the greed and the awful BS that we've seen out of the NCAA for decades. While we're at it, we'll take another cheap shot. And the NCAA can die in a fire for not giving Coach Bowden's wins back over some tests, but letting absolutely inhumane things happen at other programs and not touching those coaches' wins. But that's a soapbox for a different video. Here's maybe the most important and interesting thing of all of this to me. Everything impacts conference realignment, right? Well, did you notice the makeup of this group? It was three Big Ten schools. Obviously, USC will be over there soon. And three SEC schools. And then Florida State. Now, I'm not going to put my tinfoil hat on, but I do believe that this clearly speaks to FSU status as a program. And I think it's fairly obvious that for FSU to continue to compete with or be in a group like this, you have to think they're not going to be in the ACC too much longer. We've given our take on that. We've talked about how long that would be from now, three years, five years. Is it 20, 30? When is it? We don't know. And we've given our best guesses. We'll link some videos here at the end in a moment that you can watch to see. But I am interested to see which side of the coin Florida State falls on. This group is the haves and have-nots. And they're some of the biggest power players in the NIL space and in the college football space in general. Is Florida State going to fall on the SEC side of it, giving the SEC four teams, or on the Big Ten side of it, giving the Big Ten four teams? There has been a lot of talk and a lot of rumblings about a potential announcement. It's all over the message boards. It's all over our comments. We're going to dive in and continue to cover conference realignment. We've taken a little bit of a break with recruiting so crazy lately. We're going to talk about that in an upcoming video this next week. So make sure that you're subscribed and you don't miss it. I'm standing by everything we've said on conference realignment, though. I think Florida State's days in the ACC are pretty numbered. Uh, I think we're moving on pretty soon. If you've missed any of that talk or any of our updates on conference realignment, you can click this playlist right here to get caught up on all of it.